Hi, I'm Jonathan here with Ignite, and in this video we're going to be looking at the Extension 1 syllabus, particularly the film Lost in Translation, which is on the Literary Mindscapes elective. We're going to be looking at the way that Sofia Coppola in Lost in Translation uses and manipulates the filmic form to communicate her ideas. So just as a brief introduction to form, you're extension students, so you'd know a lot about the need to discuss form in your essays. But we want to think when we're unpacking the form of a text, what type of text is it? What are the unique features of that text type? And finally, what is the style or genre in which this text is composed? With respect to Lost in Translation, we know it's a film, and so therefore we want to be thinking about how Coppola manipulates editing, cinematography, sound, mise-en-scene to communicate her ideas about mindscapes and to construct a literary mindscape. And we also want to think about how it maybe engages with some of the stylistic features of slow cinema. The fact that it's a bit of a two-hander, it's just two characters, two protagonists. There's very little extraneous to this central story of Bob and Charlotte, and it is quite a meditative film. It's happy to sit in silence. It's happy to let some of the takes draw out for quite a long time. So we think about what's unique about the style of the film as well. So there's, I think, four key things that are going to help us, at least as introductory things to think about with respect to the form of Lost in Translation. Firstly, we think about the setting. Now, setting is one of the key subcategories of mise-en-scene, which is this umbrella category that we always end up returning to when discussing film form. By setting the film in Tokyo, Coppola immediately introduces all of these notions of cultural fusion, cultural pastiche, and urban alienation. Tokyo is the largest city in the world, but its way of life is notoriously private and reclusive, it's also increasingly a melting pot of cultures and Coppola's non-diegetic music choices where there's this fusion of traditional Eastern scales and contemporary Western beats alludes to this fusion and pastiche of different cultures within a globalised world. Indeed, when it comes to the setting, this juxtaposition of these clinical Western hotel interiors, which are very cold and depersonalizing, and the vibrant city exteriors mirrors the states of mind that our characters are in when they are able to move outside of the alienating cold hotel rooms and hotel bars, which are very westernized and not especially culturally specific and engage with the complexity and vivacity of their environment, they are able to add some meaning to their otherwise isolated and empty mindscapes. So on this note, I think the cinematography is quite effective within Lost in Translation at illustrating these different states of mind within the characters. Now what's important to acknowledge is that because Coppola's work is a film, it's a little bit more difficult to think about how it represents the interiority of characters with confessional poetry or a first-person novel, texts like Dickinson's work or Faulkner's work or some of these other works that are on the syllabus, even Shakespeare's Hamlet with the soliloquies within there, how this is a little bit easier to represent one's interior mind, whereas a camera with a film is very much always looking from the outside. It's not able to necessarily weasel its way within the brain and the mind of a character. And Coppola doesn't use voiceover, so we want to think about how the camera can actually be a mechanism for exploring someone's interior world, not just documenting the exterior world, which is how it's typically used. One of these ways is through the cinematographic contrast, where you have some very static shots, 
that are alluding to through the very form of the film, that stasis within the characters' mindscapes, that emotional deadening that's occurred to both of them, in contrast to the centerpiece sequence of the film, where they finally, together, explore the Tokyo nightlife and move between karaoke bars and house parties and different environs, the fluidity of the camera work there, where it's increasingly handheld, the takes are quite long, and they're willing to explore the vibrancy and the lights of Tokyo, it suggests that there's a possibility for one's interior world to be enlivened through an engagement with the exterior world. The use of blocking and negative space within Lost in Translation is also quite important. Blocking is the placement of actors within the frame, and negative space refers to the kind of blank space that's within a frame. I think in these two screenshots from the film, we can see how negative space collapses with the re-blocking of the actors, Scarlett Johansson and Bill Murray. What Coppola does when they first interact is create a chasm between them. There is this emotional distance between the characters on their first meeting that is eventually collapsed when Charlotte puts her head on Bob's shoulder. So we can see how, again, visual language, rather than verbal language, rather than literary language, is used as a way to represent the shifting dynamics of these characters and to represent these interior worlds, to create a literary mindscape. Finally, the film uses parallel editing to allude to the symbiosis of these characters. Now, parallel editing is otherwise known as cross-cutting. It's where an editor or a director will shift between two different locations to imply that something is happening at the same time in these two different spaces. Especially early in the film, for the first half an hour or so before Bob and Charlotte interact, Coppola shifts back and forth between the two within their alienating hotel rooms within the hotel gym or the hotel bar to show how there is this tacit sense of connection that we're aware of, but they're not aware of, through space and time. Something that is going to eventually draw these characters together and accentuates the similarity of their dispositions and thus their mindscapes. Thank you for watching this video and stay tuned to more videos about Lost in Translation and other texts. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. If you do like the content, subscribe to our channel and we'll have more videos coming your way. That's right guys, thanks for watching and please make sure you check out our online resource database. We've had a team of state rank achievers and heads of English put these together for you, covering everything from essay structures and examples all the way through to craft of writing and comprehension skills. So check them out at ignitehse.com.au and we look forward to seeing you in the next video.